Hi, I'm Paula. Welcome to my studio. That was weird. <laughs> Can it be less awkward? Today I'm going to be painting on these terracotta pots. I still don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I grabbed a, a couple because I thought it was going to be a fun craft to do. So let's see what I come up with. Okay, and that was still a pretty awkward intro, but who cares? Let's get to this. Here are my three terracotta planters made in Ecuador, as you can see. And I had no clue what to paint on them still at this point. So I decided to push my creativity by limiting my color palette to five acrylic paints. And then I grabbed some complementary paint markers to go along with them. Okay, so here are my three pots, and I also got one of those little dishes you put underneath to catch water, I guess. The first thing I'm going to do is put all of my colors on my palette so I can play with all of them. And for this pot, I decide I'm just going to go with the flow and make it up as I go. So I decide I'm going to start with big shapes. They don't make any sense. I'm just doing large shapes here and filling them with color. And I'm making them large enough so they fill a lot of the space on my pot and they will act as a background. I already know that these are going to need a second layer so I'm not that worried that I used the steel color and I stained it all because I didn't wash my brush properly. I see that shape from the front, I don't like it so I just extend it a bit and I'm just making it up as I go as I said before. I'm going to let these three first shapes dry a bit before I give a second layer of paint and oh, what has appeared on my paint palette. It's my little pet hearts from my previous video. Uh, while I was waiting for the layers to dry I saw all of them had little imperfections that needed to be fixed because I forgot to seal them. So since I was using the same colors, I just brought them in and they're drying right there too. Here I am applying all of the second layers and once again I'm trying to not destroy my working surface in the first minute of the video and I'm protecting it with a paper towel. As the bottom of the pot dries and I also give a little attention to my hearts which did receive a varnish at the end and now they're safe. Three layers of paint later and we're ready to do something else. The first thing I noticed is I have stained my pot with some pink so I'm gonna start my first medium shape and I'm making a heart. So now I'm filling more of the space on the pot with medium shapes. I have my pink heart and I'm also doing a blue star and a blue circle. I also fill my space with some dots I guess you could call them and give a second layer to the shapes so they're all nice and pretty. Okay and here we are on the next day because I had to run out and leave it as it was. I start with the very important step of peeling off the leftover paint because it's so satisfying to do. And then I'm ready to work on my pot again. I start drawing smaller shapes and elements. Here I just thought I would do more stars. I do that and I just keep adding to it. I just look at it and add something here and there. I just keep it like basic shapes. I outline with my white Posca. I do some dots, some stars. Just anything that comes to my mind and seems fun to make and seems fun in the composition. Again, this first pot I had no plan other than to have fun with it. And I also wanted to do something simple because the first time I do something I always experiment with the material and I know what I'm getting to so I want to do something that's not stressful or too precise. And with all those little details in I'm calling this first pot done. I really like how it turned out. I think it's really really fun. And now it's time to work on my second one. For this pot I decide to do a mountain sort of theme. I've seen a lot of pots around like this but I want it to be inspired by my paintings. So the first thing I want to do is uh, cover it all with white and this takes a lot of layers. I don't remember if it was three or four layers, but it was okay because that day I had so much going on at the studio. I was painting samples for a Valentine's Day gift box that I'm making. I was of course painting this, I was finishing a portrait, and I was packaging a painting that needed to ship out all at the same time. <laughs> okay, so after a few of those layers and when it was fully and when it was fully dried, it was time to paint in my mountains. And I started with the blue, and as soon as I grabbed my perfectly white pot, now I've stained it, 
and then I stained it again so I went to wash my hands before continuing and after the blue I drew with the Posca how I wanted the mountains to look for the teal and I'm leaving a tiny white space between each color and then repeated the process with pink and with green again I knew these are gonna all need second layers and that green needed I think it was four again and then I'm so sorry I did not notice at all that my camera had died out and I didn't film the next step which was adding what I call in my paintings vibration and topography lines so I'm going to reenact this for you that leads me to my third and final pot for this one I am using that little plate and what do I have here air dry clay again and my tools I hope this works I want to do a rainbow with clouds which has been a theme lately in my crafts so I want the dish to be the clouds and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make the clay stick to it and dry and not fall down I don't know if it's going to work but I'm trying so I'm making and sculpting my clouds and then suddenly I think maybe it will stick better if I sand it all so here I am sanding the heck out of this little dish and with that done I just clean it up I just continue to sculpt my clouds and to try to make them attach to the terracotta and try to make them attach to the terracotta 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 as best as I can. I'm using a lot of water, I'm modeling, using all of my tools, and I hope this works. I do another cloud on the other side because I want to paint a rainbow on each side of my pot so it will look pretty from both sides. And now I'm done. Wash my hands, put everything away, and let it dry, hoping for the best. I do put my pot on it for a little while before leaving it to dry to mark where I want my rainbows to be. So I start painting my first rainbow with the same colors, keeping it simple, and of course by now I know all of these are gonna need a second or third layers of paint, but that's okay. And once again we jump to, to the next day because I had to leave it at where it was, and my, I'm gonna call it a tray, is dry. The clouds have not fallen off, they are a bit cracked though, but I know how to fix this now with the modeling paste. So I just put a lot of that in there and with just go in with my brush and I start fixing all of the cracks. And I think it looks pretty decent, so I set it aside to dry again. Okay, back to the rainbow I started yesterday. And of course, first priorities is to peel the leftover paint. I just love doing this so much. I give all of my colors a second layer and then I start doing the details. I brought this little canvas in to rest my wrist on because the angle of my wrist was so awkward it was hurting. The modeling paste has dried now and I saw somewhere that someone was making clay and they did sand it a little bit so I went ahead and did that and I have to tell you it it's a good thing to do. The surface is now smoother and I like it better. So I start giving this my first layer of white. I know it's going to take a few layers and then go back to adding more details with my Poscas to my first side of the rainbow. Here I am adding some little hearts and then I add lines and shapes. Working on the other side of the pot and doing my second rainbow and taking breaks in between to give the tray more layers of white. Again, I finish my rainbow, let it dry, add some details with the Poscas, and I definitely think this is where I have fun, adding all of the details and personality. I did add more blue because I really like the contrast. And of course, I'm still taking breaks to give that tray more layers of white. I add a little heart, some more details, and finally, of course, I varnish them to protect my paint job. Here are all three of my pots. They're all very different, but because I kept my color palette limited, I think they still look nice together. And I really love the idea of creating something in the tray that matches with the pot and adding 3D elements with clay. I hope I can come up with another idea for this set so I can create it. If not, your suggestions are welcome. I also wanted to show you how one of these would look filled up and with a ribbon so you can give it to someone as a gift. And they 
can use it as a planter later. Okay, that's it from me today. I hope you like how my planner turned out. And if you did, please consider subscribing to support me creating more of this type of content. Have a beautiful day.